Well, 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 here we are again at Privateer FX, second day of October. It's a Tuesday, people. The Reserve Bank of Australia held official cash rates at 1.5% last night, as expected. No drama, quiet night overall. So we have the 12 point range in Euro dollar. It's pretty damn quiet. Um, let's check and look at the important stuff going on here. Crude, first and foremost. We tried to sell this uh, yesterday, 74, 68. We killed that at 91 when we made fresh highs. Boy, I had no idea this thing was going to smash. Smash up here. Very, very robust bar <laughs> through uh, the year's highs. Let's put out this on the weeklies. It's been a while since we've been up here, 20, 2014. Um, and you can see why everyone's going. This has another 10 bucks in it. A lot of clear air up here, not too much resistance at all. Um, if you're trading crude, uh, you kind of just have to be long. Your cut point is uh, called 74.70. Um, and then you just have to be careful on Wednesday when they announce, uh, when they make the oil inventory announcements. Anyway, we're not going to be playing with crude today. Uh, we're focusing more on Euro and Euro Yen. Euro eventually had a bearish day took forever of course 6 p.m. European time we've already put in a 12-hour shift over here uh, it's annoying it's annoying for the 50 year olds out there uh, like myself this uh, this looks like it has further to go and it's driven by the BTPs uh, which we talked about late last week Italy's kind of screwed here uh, you know, when you increase spending and you have really no hope of increasing revenue, and that's really the key thing for Italy, and just as a reminder, revenue for Italy is tax collection. They're not that great at that historically. Italians aren't, um, let's say, the most reliable taxpayers uh, in Europe. This is always going to be a problem for that country, the, the revenue side. So then when you you raise the expense side it's just a it's just a nasty it's a nasty little stew uh, so we gotta keep a close eye on this we closed yesterday BTPs here's the chart 122.17 you can see here and we talked about it this low here uh, in in June was 05 24 in August, 35 in September, yesterday is 04, pretty good chance this gaps through the figure at the open in an hour and 15 minutes, um, and then we test this uh, eventually 120.09, 120 handle. If you can trade BTPs, if you have access to liquidity, uh, we encourage you to sell rallies here. It's going to be a little bit late in the day for a break trade. This is going to be messy through 122. Um, you know, think of the new range to be basically 126, 120 for now. So anything over 124, you want to put a mild sale on. We've gone into the logistics of this as well. At the end of this year, the biggest buyer of the BTPs is now out of the market, which is the ECB. Uh, this doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. Call your grandmother up as well and ask her if she'll she'll uh, buy Italian-based bonds for 10 years with a 3% yield. She'll laugh you out of the kitchen. Anyway, um, this should drag euro dollar lower. We had it in our book, uh, our little prediction book, that once BTPs broke through the range lows, Euro would break through 115.26.
So, this isn't, hasn't happened exactly yet, but this looks like it's in the cards uh, if BTPs continue. Euro Yen has been stubborn. Uh, that's the weekly. You can see small range overnight. Uh, we had a high of the figure. I don't know why it was trading up there, but now we're trading uh, at 88. I still don't know why it's trading at 88. Um, this should go lower with this uh, functional problems in Italy driving the bus. The big point in Euro Yen, sort of the mathematical bull bear point, is a 200 day. It's 131 the figure. We look for this to go uh, Wednesday or Thursday. This looks like this is going to be a stubborn grind lower for now. And we might get acceleration once we get to the southern side of this 200 day. What else is out there? The Swiss Yen chart I was looking at yesterday. Swiss Yen's been a funny one. Had this big move up, nobody caught. Now we're kind of getting this kind of like head and shoulders pattern here. And you can see the Swiss Yen has been really driven by uh, Dollar Swiss. Swiss Yen was a kaleidoscope higher when Dollar Swiss was collapsing. Now Swiss Yen is becoming a kaleidoscope lower while Dollar Swiss is going up. Um, it's very interesting. This. Uh, 115.70. It's eight points away. This isn't what you would call a break trade because Swiss Yen doesn't really break too well. Um, but Swiss Yen looks like it's set to go lower. Let's just put it that way. Lower still. We've had a big move down from 118. Now we're 115.80. Looks like we're heading back to basically 113. Um, and that will be dollar Swiss at parity over the next sort of say two weeks. So Swiss Yen lower looks looks interesting. Our old friend Dollar Czar. We're still always playing on the long side in Dollar Czar. Um, the moment this month will be the budget which is October 23rd. But we've had two indecisive days. Pretty good bullish bar. Not amazing. But close at the highs. Um, this looks to be a platform for for longs um, and if you're bored being long dollars are I understand uh, but we are um, and we'll be adding tactically through some of these points on the way up because we still do believe uh, you know this thing's heading for 118 I mean heading for 18 uh, Moody's is going to downgrade this month. The budget's going to be a disaster. Uh, the place is basically just a shambles, and I'm sorry to say, uh, it just is. Um, anyway, moving forward, the same could be said for uh, Turkey. Uh, but we don't trade dollar Turkey just because it's too, it's too hectic, too illiquid, and uh, just kind of a pain in the ass. CAD, everyone's favorite. Printed a low of 82 yesterday. Not really sure what to do with this. Every single person I talked to is trying to sell at 128.50. So there will be some resistance up there. It's kind of one of those deals, though. If they get filled, they're going to be wrong. Uh, and if they don't get filled, this thing is going to keep going lower. I'm not really sure what to do with this. I, I have a feeling they're going to get filled and they're going to be wrong. Uh, U.S. rates and just sort of the exaggerated love for CAD all of a sudden, just because it's snapped, the thing is done. Um, it seems a little bit overdone to me. But that said, oil is higher, so that's good for CAD. And, you know, they're 100% locked in for uh, raising rates at the next BOC meeting now so that also uh, could be good for CAD so I'm not really sure here I'm just sharing information there will be sellers between 128.50 and 128.70 what else 
not too much else out there. We're just kind of uh, focusing on this BTP and the Euro story. Uh, no UK numbers out today. Um, let me see what we have. Out of the U.S., looks like it's going to be, oh yeah, we've got Powell speaking, 6.45 p.m. I'll be on the squash court, so I won't be, uh, won't be watching that, but got to, for all of you who, uh, who will be around, that's important. Obviously, Chairman Powell, when he speaks, you got to listen there. You also have FOMC Quarles speaking. Pretty low, low impact day for data, except for Powell. And uh, that's 12 hours away, so we'll cross that bridge as we get closer to 4 p.m. Uh, European time. All right, I've said enough, people. Good luck out there. I will uh, see you when I see you. Ciao.